morning. It is 631. Welcome back to the Good Morning Show with featuring Ed Matthews. And, and Tracy McCain as well. I can say featuring because I don't have to worry about hurting anybody else's feelings. You know, That's Megan's it. not here. Eric's not here. It's, right. it's just you. It's just me and, and me. you. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, first half of the day dry. Yeah. Not going to be the case later today and tonight. We could get another soaking rain, oh maybe goodness. over an inch of rain Have in a few parts the of the Piedmont. Yet? Well, the wettest, the wettest year uh, in uh, recorded history wow. since records have been kept, and we're going to add to that m amazing surplus uh, several times over before we reach the new year. Well, then, enough said. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Lock yeah, my lips, exactly. right? <laughs> well, at least it's not the other form of precipitation. So. Yep, no snow in the forecast, just some rain. Let's talk about it this morning as we take a look at the weather maps and uh, show you a warm front to our south. That'll lift our way today. Now, you might see a little sunshine this morning, but overall clouds increase. Nothing more than a a few spotty showers this afternoon with the approach of the warm front. But as we go into the evening and overnight period, the main rain, which is now out over the Midwest, will move into the region. So a good shot of rain showers overnight and during the day on Friday. And with that warm front lifting through the area after being in the mid and upper 40s today, we're going to jump into the 60s for highs coming up tomorrow. But the rain will taper off late Friday and Friday evening. Saturday, a nice dry day, sun and clouds. But on the tail end of this uh, departing system, a little cold front draped over the uh, deep south wave of low pressure develops and you guessed it tracks our way uh, it's going to bring another round of rain to the Piedmont for Sunday and uh, into Monday. So that'll be our second round of rain after what we're dealing with uh, today through tomorrow. And then yet another system will move in late Monday and that'll set the stage for some wet weather for well, uh, the new year starts off wet here in the Piedmont. It is 633. Let's take a look at the roads here. WFMY News 2 traffic. And as we look at your highway drive times, we're looking at a pretty neat commute to Winston-Salem from Wendover to US 52 on 220 West. A quick 19 minute drive going about 65 miles per hour. We do see some slowdowns on 220 West from Wendover to 29 in Elm Street right near the hospital. Speeds at about 41 miles per hour. It will only take you two minutes, but it'll be a stop and go type of ride. Taking a look at your drive times from High Point heading to Winston-Salem on 66 West. 14 minutes to I-40 going about 65 miles per hour. A little slower from 74 to I-40 on Business 85 North going about 61 miles per hour, but just an 11 minute drive. So not bad out there. As you can see here through our live DOT traffic camera looks pretty good in Winston-Salem. But of course, if anything happens on the roads, we will keep you posted right here on the Good Morning Show. Well, 2019 is right around the corner and you don't want a, your holiday plants to fall apart, of course. So poinsettias, one of the most popular holiday plants and their ways to keep them fresh through the new year. WFMY News 2's Candace Red gives us some tips this morning. Good morning. Good morning and check out all these lovely and bright poinsettias. And as you can see, we have a lot of colors here, um, including red and yellow, it looks like. But here's the deal, you don't want them to look lifeless, especially when the new year comes around. That's why I'm here with Alonzo Johnson. He is the manager with Gazebo. And Alonzo, give us some tips when it comes to keeping these plants in tip top shape. What are some do's and don'ts? Well, I can tell you one thing, Candace, if you wind up purchasing a plant that has foil wrappings on it, what I normally suggest is that we cut the bottom of it. So when you water the plant, um, they'll have proper drainage. You don't want them sitting in too much water. Once the plant is fully drained, uh, full of the, uh, the water, you want to then place it back in full light. Again, away from areas where there's cool air coming through or close to a window, letting it touch the window. Um, another thing that I also like to do with uh, our Christmas plant is to also water maybe once a week, but touch the soil. It will determine whether or not it's already watered or it has too much water. It should have a dry crust on the top, but feel slightly moist beneath the, beneath the surface. Uh, another item that I also, another thing that I suggest is that we, pre we prevent a lot of bumping of the plant. So we try to keep the plant a little, a little bit elevated from the floor, um, away from children and away from dogs or pets and things of that nature. Uh, one other tip that I also like to recommend is that when the, the, the plant is broken, it produces a milky substance. That milky substance has a tendency 
to irritate the skin. Now, it's not long term, but it is short term and it is rather irritating. So please be careful when you mess with the plant. And then if you see a broken piece and you see the white milky substance, do not touch, handle with care. Alonzo, a lot of great tips there. What about the temperature? Does that matter when it comes to this particular type of plant? Absolutely. This plant should stay somewhere between 65 and 75 degrees. Um, try to keep it away from areas where the door is constantly open, like in a front open uh, entrance way or back entrance way. Uh, another thing that I like to suggest is that we keep it in real bright sunlight. All right, sounds good. Alonzo Johnson again, the manager here at Gazebo with some great tips for you. And if you missed it or if you didn't have your notepad handy to write them down, don't worry. We have all these tips on our website at WFMyNews2.com. Just look for this story in the Good Morning Show section. All right, Candace, thank you. It is 636. A heartbreaking story begins our 92nd morning rush. Two fires in Winston-Salem in two days. Now 20 people have lost their homes just days after Christmas. WFMY News 2's Adore Chumba spoke with one of the families. First of all, thankful that me and my family and everybody families were safe. A Christmas Day fire forced out Takara Roberts' family and others living in four units of this building on Harrington Circle in Winston-Salem. We kept hearing a beeping noise. Smelt smoke, but I really didn't think nothing of it because I was cooking. That beeping, a working smoke alarm. It alerted neighbors to the fire and they got out. The Winston-Salem Fire Department said the fire spread quickly because the apartments have shared attics. Everything is pretty much like a lot of smoke damage. Uh, they had to go through the ceiling. So pretty much our stuff is just ruined. The family is staying with a nearby relative and getting help from the Red Cross, but it's a long road to rebuilding. At the moment, we didn't have anything to wear, so I got like underwear, clothes, so like uh, for us to put on for the next couple of days, so we figure it out. Takara says this fire has taught her two big lessons, the importance of family and... If I had renters insurance, I might not be in such a tough spot because now we have to start completely over, like beds, everything. And so... Next, I'm definitely going to have rentals insurance. Well, thankfully, they are all safe. The Red Cross is assisting with those families, and that's a look at your morning rush. In your national headlines this morning, a second migrant child has died while in the custody of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Eight-year-old Felipe Gomez Alonzo went to the hospital with a fever and died on Christmas Eve. The commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection said his, his agency is not equipped to handle the number of children who are trying to cross the border. This is the second death of a migrant child in U.S. custody this month. Seven-year-old Jacqueline Call died a day after being taken into custody. The Guatemalan girl's father told border agents she was sick, but it was too late. Six days in and the federal government is still partially shut down. Right now, there are no signs from lawmakers about a deal leaving 800,000 federal employees either furloughed or working without pay. The economic advisor for the White House says this is a short-term problem. Lawmakers will return to Capitol Hill today to work towards ending the shutdown. A famous holiday dessert item is thrust into the spotlight on today. It is National Fruitcake Day. Fruitcakes, whose durability is often joked about, have long been a popular holiday tradition. They are made with dried fruit or chopped candies with spices and nuts. Some are even soaked in alcohol. Officials believe fruitcakes have originated in Rome. Mail order fruitcakes were first available in the U.S. in 1913. So how do you feel about fruitcake, Ed? Well, the, the kind that my grandmother made were, were disgusting. Mm -hmm. I never liked those. They were just the mushy, gooey, kind of traditional fruitcake. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to drive very far to go down to Bear Creek in Chatham I've County, Southern Supreme. Tracy, if you haven't been there, now it's a completely different type of fruitcake. Mm -hmm. If you like nuts, okay. you're going to love this fruitcake. It is really, so really, really good. it's really like nut cake. It really is. It really fruit. is. And, and it's got, you know, it's got the fruit in it and mm -hmm. all that stuff, but it's just not the gooey, mushy stuff. And I think my mom, uh, my mm -hmm. grandmother probably uh, added that uh, alcohol in it as well. I just didn't <laughs> like it. I, I didn't yeah. think it was good. But Southern Supreme Fruitcake is the best. 
That's what I heard. Chad Silver was raving about it yeah. the other day. And I said, do you have samples? And he said, no. And I'm like, well, <laughs> They <thanks."> got gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, we want to know how you feel about fruitcake, whether you love it or you don't like it mm -hmm. at all. Head over to WFMY.com slash vote now and tell us what you think. All right now, we want to give you some time to uh, weigh in already. Ugh, some people say that they just don't like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, about mm, 100%, I'm going to guess. Yeah. Yeah, we can get there. Ooh, 100% <laughs> say that they hate it. I will say that I've only had it once, and it wasn't uh, homemade. It was mail order. So it was a gift from someone. Now, I don't yeah. know if it was a fresh gift Mm -hmm. or something that had been yeah. re-gifted a few times, but it made my stomach ill. Yeah, the, uh, so. the, I think the old, what they call the old fashioned and the traditional fruit cakes, um, I, I, I don't like them. There, mm -hmm. there was, growing up, I remember Claxton uh, fruit cake, which mm -hmm. was the old traditional, and that was from Claxton, Georgia. Okay. And, uh, but um, like I said, the Southern uh, Supreme is just a completely different fruit right. cake. It's a, two, uh, it's a fruit cake, but it is a very delicious fruit well, cake. Well, I'm glad you're so. here, Ed, because you certainly know a lot about fruit cake, well, and I had no idea. You know, you know, I just, uh, well, I, I, it's on my way home to right. Sanford, so I just Stop stopped in. by there. That's <laughs> so awesome. Uh, so awesome, and I I think they're I think they're open year round, and they ship. I mean, they started as a very small operation, mm -hmm. and now they ship worldwide. Wow. They got a store down there, and it's not just fruit cakes; it's a lot of other things that they sell. Want, and I'm going to I'm going to send them a bill for this nice <laughs> commercial that I'm giving them. As but they're should. really good. They're really yeah. good, and they're a hometown, uh, you know, operation. They're great people there in uh, Chatham County. All right. Well, if you have uh, anything that you want to add to Ed's fruitcake scenario, make sure you head <laughs> to my website. I posted this question. Do you like fruitcake? Yes or no? And you can see on your screen that it's kind of split right now. Yeah, 56 percent say that you absolutely love it. 44 percent have that little mean face. They say mm. they don't like it at all. So we'll keep weighing in and, and see what your results are coming up on the Good Morning Show. So everyone's looking ahead to New Year's Eve already. Wow, the parties, the fun. Well, your teenagers want to have some fun too, but you want to keep them safe. We'll talk about the conversation that needs to be had before they head out coming up right here on the Good Morning Show. Right. All right. Do you want to give them a mic check real quick and then we can go over this? Yeah. Okay. They're asking for a mic check. What am I talking about? Yeah. Teens, you need to make sure that you start that conversation. Sometimes you don't even need a real life example.
Well, we'll celebrate New Year's Eve in just a few days. Many teenagers don't want to hang out with mom and dad for the New Year's Eve festivities. They want to be with their friends. So that brings us to an important conversation that you need to have with your child. How do you start talking with your kids about the dangers of alcohol on New Year's Eve? So our Blanca Cobb has some just suggestions this morning. How do you get that conversation started? You just jump right on in. Mm -hmm. You have to have a straight talk and say, hey, look, I know you want to have fun. You want to hang out with your friends for New Year's Eve. That's great. But we need to talk about some dangers mm -hmm. of New Year's Eve, specifically alcohol. Some people want to experiment sometimes, or even if your kid isn't even interested in it, more than likely they're going to be around people who are drinking alcohol. So they have to know what that looks like with other people if they're not accustomed to seeing it. Mm -hmm. And even if they're just drinking a soft drink, you need to make sure that they know that they just don't leave their drink around because mm -hmm. you never know what someone might slip into it. Right. And then also talk about where they, where do you think you want to go for mm -hmm. New Year's Eve and who's going to be there and are there any adults? All those particulars you have to talk to them about. Yeah, and you also have to talk to them about driving, uh, especially on this night. This night is a little bit different than other situations. It is, um, Tracy, you're absolutely right because people are drinking. A lot of times people will drink and they don't realize the effect that alcohol has. It, people process it differently mm -hmm. so others will feel that buzz quicker. Mm -hmm. Others might take a little longer. It doesn't mean just because they don't feel it, it doesn't mean it's not impacting them cognitively or their motor skills. Right. So your children have to, your teenagers have to understand this and you might have confidence in their ability in driving but you're there's a lot that they cannot control on the road. And we do know, if you look at all the statistics, mm -hmm. the numbers increase of people who have been drinking and who choose to drive. Yeah. So it's, it can be very dangerous. And you mentioned this earlier, is that that temptation to experiment. You know, how do you address that with your kids? You want to tell them what your expectations are. So if your expectations is absolutely no drinking, not even trying it, realize this, your children still have free will. My suggestion is, before they leave the house, you can say, look, if you feel like your friend has had too much to drink, or you're not even sure, if you're questioning it, you can either get an Uber or you can call me. Mm -hmm. I will come and get you. That night, we won't discuss it. I want you home safe. Right. If you choose to drink, even if you take one sip, you can still call me. Mm -hmm. I will come and get you or I'll Uber you home mm -hmm. and we'll talk about it another time. Right. Let them I, know that there are options. Let them know that there are options. Because you can tell your kids not to do something. It doesn't mean they're going to listen. Mm -hmm. So that night, New Year's Eve isn't about getting in trouble, it's about getting them home safe. And then later on, you can have a conversation mm -hmm. about what happened on New Year's Eve. All right, thanks so much for your insight, Blanca. Really, really appreciate it, of course. If you want to consider continue this conversation with Blanca, you can do so on her Facebook page. You can get in contact with her on Facebook, and uh, she's Blanca Cobb body language expert. Give her a like and write a question or pose a comment on her page.
In your entertainment headlines, Billboard releases its top music videos of 2018, and a new film gets a zero rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Ileana Diaz has more. The new film Holmes and Watson got a rare rating after hitting theaters Christmas Day. He's a master of disguise. What have you done with Sherlock? Why Watson? I never left. The flick stars Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, and was not screened in advance for critics. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 0% rating, the third film this year to receive such a low score. Happy, happy New Year. Netflix is bringing back its family-friendly collection of New Year's countdown videos. The 14 selections are available now through the New Year and can be streamed anytime. So instead of waiting till midnight, your little one can still ring in the New Year just in time for bed. And Billboard has released its list of this year's top 50 music videos. Rapper Drake's Nice For What came in at number one. Videos by Cher, Casey Musgraves and Cardi B also made the list. That's your eye on entertainment, Ileana Diaz, CBS News, Los Angeles. The time is 6.55, grab the umbrella this morning. We're gonna see increasing chances of uh, rain showers as we head through the afternoon. Look at all this rain moving from the Plain States into the uh, Tennessee and Ohio Valley. That's what will come at us tonight and tomorrow, a steadier widespread rain. I am tracking a few spotty showers in Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, northern Georgia, and uh, into Alabama. Some of those will move into the Piedmont this afternoon, but any rain today will be light before the rain ramps up in the overnight hours and it'll be with us during the day tomorrow as well. So clouds build this morning, a few spotty showers in the afternoon and 46. Rain likely tonight and Friday. Some areas could get just over an inch of rain before it tapers off Friday evening. Saturday, a nice dry mild day before more rain comes into the Piedmont. Sunday and Sunday night, another system comes our way early next week.